Okay, we're back live here at EMC World, Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of EMC World, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm um, John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and as watchers of this program know that we love stories of organizations that essentially take IT, which is oftentimes seen as a cost, and, and turn it into a business, turn it into profits. Mark Wright is here. He's the Vice President of Platform Service at NYSE Technologies, uh, of, of an organization we've had on before, but Mark, this is your first time. Welcome to theCUBE. It really is. Thank you for having me. So why don't you just you know, really rehash some of the things, maybe not rehash, but talk about your organization, how it's evolving, Great. what it does, and you know, so let's start there. Well, let me start about 200 years ago. <laughs> And, uh, Did you we'll say 200? Yeah, okay. We'll, that's when our enterprise got started, <laughs> under the buttonwood tree. So yeah, yeah, right. we had a community and a, uh, an ecosystem, if you will, of traders. They went inside for a couple hundred years. Again, the same sort of community that, that we really served as an exchange. And what we really represent today is taking that community uh, to the electronic age. So we have uh, a number of assets that we, we, we bring to bear. We have, we're known for resilient networks and data centers, strong uh, information security, and robust uh, uh, tools and infrastructure. For, so for our community, what we're trying to do is help them roll out electronic trading solutions as well as broader parts of their infrastructure and manage them. Okay, so now this has evolved. I mean, you guys had this vision uh, to basically, you're a leader in that industry, so okay, hey, we can help our clients, we can help our industry. Um, how has it evolved in the last couple of years and where are we today? Right. Well, I think that our experience is probably parallel the, the learning curve that most of the people are on, where um, we do have a, what I call a public cloud offering, a shared infrastructure for people, but for our client base, which typically is banks and brokerage firms with mature IT uh, requirements and strong information security requirements, more of a private solution is what they're looking for. So while we will help people roll out a private cloud offering, or a, have a, a public cloud offering, a private cloud as well as more dedicated infrastructure is more typically what they're looking for. So we offer that to them in a managed service uh, capacity, either in our own data centers or in uh, third party hosting centers around the globe. Uh, one of the things we've done over the last year and a half is we've, we've, we've spun up what we call liquidity centers, uh, liquidity hubs uh, in uh, New York area, London, now Toronto and Tokyo, and we have some others we're looking at. So the idea is that you can come to us and, and uh, roll out a trading solution, a trading infrastructure in one of our locations and then have a great deal of familiarity and comfort that that same approach can then be used globally. So what causes a customer <clears throat> to work with you? Are they sort of, you know, they don't, they don't want to do the non-differentiated heavy list lifting, there's maybe some struggling, there's a, maybe trying to be opportunistic, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, uh, it, you know, it comes in from another number of dimensions. You know, in the trading space, uh, time is definitely money, and uh, people compete for microseconds of speed advantage to the point where it's actually a regulated resource. We have to guarantee that all the market participants have the same latency to our markets. But that's sort of one entry point is people look for low latency trading applications that come and they co-locate with us in our uh, data centers near our exchanges. Uh, but there are a number of other ways that people uh, we have gotten to know us and, and come to us. Uh, we're a big market data provider. That's our big data. You know, I just got a, another proposal across my desk this week for another petabyte of storage for you know the, for the, the big tick histories that now are essential for running a trading operation. Uh, you'd be surprised to what extent firms have their own copies of all these things that are in fact uh, common. So for us to roll out an inf a common uh, tick store is uh, one of the activities we're involved in right now. And the telemetry data that people talk about in our case is our clients trading telemetry, all the information around their trading decisions that they then want to store and host in a big data capacity and use all of uh, a common tool set to analyze it. 
Okay, so you've got that, that data and it's private data for each of your clients, is that right? It's a combination, so there is certainly a common core of tick data that is <laughs> universal, and having that one reference copy of that mm -hmm. is a big, uh, both you know, cost and attention save for everyone, and then they can roll into that their own value-added content, and uh, or this telemetry, their own uh, data, and then uh, do their own back testing and analysis to help them iterate on their own trading strategies. So that's one example of uh, how we're working with clients to, to roll out trading infrastructure. So, what are you guys doing here? What's, uh, what's the connection with EMC and EMC World? We are a business partner. Storage is a big part of our uh, requirements and capacity. We, uh, as I mentioned, uh, tick data is a definitely a big uh, multi-petabyte problem that we work on. Uh, we're also working in another area, and one of my current projects is in the archive space. So we're working with EMC to see if we is, is a place for us to roll out a complete archive stack, right down from their sort of source one offering all the way down to uh, what they call 17A4 compliance storage uh, to get, this would be a non-core activity that, our, that firms are trying to get to move away from. So whereas trading technology is very much uh, the bread and butter and the core of their business, there's a big regulatory overhang and it's growing and anything they can do to sort of help them not be distracted by that and, and, and out, offload that to someone else is, uh, is an important threat. Okay, so we've heard a lot this week about this whole notion of software-defined storage and we've been hearing this software-defined data center for quite some time now. As a service provider, what does that mean to you? Is that something that you're ready to hop on? Do you need more time to sort of sort through it and, 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 and see it take shape? Talk about that well, a little bit. Well, the thing I like about that general story is that you know, our client base is very much big organizations with mature processes big commitments to you know, legacy infrastructures, and anything which can allow us to uh, do this sort of, uh, facilitate more of a hybrid environment, and such that they can have their own infrastructure pieces that they continue to control, as well as pieces that we are now managing for them in our data centers and other hosting facilities, and uh, I think a software-defined model is going to help with sort of the fluidity about that model. Uh, you know, our clients are not lining up to go to the public cloud. They're much more uh, about trying to find the best way to in fact manage down their own operating expenses and get their attention and mind share back to their core business. So again, I think, I think it fits into that, that area well. Mark, who are your competitors? Is it mostly doing it, do it yourself? There's a lot of do it yourself. Um, you know, the, it, it's usually the usual suspects. I mean, the, the, the big uh, telcos all have, have a presence. Uh, the, some of the other big managed service providers. I think where we fit in is we have, if you will, a platform that really addresses a number of, a number of problems in their vertical. So we have, we have real-time market data, we have historical market data, we have uh, connectivity products to get to all the markets. Uh, we have a, uh, a brand they're very comfortable with with respect to storing their data and, and, and housing their activities inside it. So that's how we differentiate ourselves against you know, a number of, quite honestly, very big players. Yeah, so, um... You say you know your your clients don't want to go to the public cloud, but at the same time, they see what Amazon's doing. So there's that allure there. So how do you see this this evolving, Mark? I mean, today they're very your, your clients quite cautious. You're kind of holding your their hands through it. You're learning. Where do you see this evolving? I think we end up meeting them in the middle, frankly. I mean, I think that we are the way we've approached our business is to help. Uh, the current strong IT organizations evolve towards more of an outsourced model, the things that are appropriate, uh, where they can continue to control the things that are essential to them, but uh, also offload things that may, may be more comfortable or better done by a service provider. And so in, in the long term, sure, there will be a big middle ground. Some of these things it may continue to be, if you will, private, but in a, in a cloud. But in fact, some pieces of this will end up in a much more public format and a forum. So I, I really do see it meeting in the middle as opposed to any sort of uh, uh, the new disruptor somehow changing everything. Yeah, so it's you know this vision of it, it's electricity, you just plug it in. Yeah. IT's just not that simple. No, no. <laughs> These are very, very purpose-built applications and you know they're only getting more delicate in because of the big data going through them today. Well, and your industry is probably the hardest, you know, to, from that standpoint. But there, even in your business, you're saying there are portions that 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 are, will, you know, pretty seamlessly go public. Uh, you know, I I think that they there's a still still a lot of wait and see there. Yeah, you know, okay. it's very it's very it's not so much that they're going there today. I mean, they, everybody knows that they, everybody's run their dev test experiment. You know, they've all they've all got a little bit of. of, of 
activity out there. There might be that if you have a, a very uh, uh, elastic kind of compute problem for some particular analysis, maybe you'll go there for that. But the operations of the firm, it's a long right. time before that'll be moving on. All right, Mark. Well, listen, thanks very much for coming on and uh, sharing the story of uh, NYSE Technologies. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. It was uh, great to meet you. All right, everybody, keep it right there. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. I'm here with John Furrier. I'm Dave Vellante. We'll be right back live from EMC World 2013.